Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Stuff I Learned in the House of Bamboo. We have a problem. Crop yields are plateauing, which is not great news considering the world population is predicted to hit 9 billion people by 2050. Last century, the human race bought itself valuable time through artificial fertilizers, selective breeding, and advanced irrigation. From 1950 to 2011, the global harvest has tripled, but now it's our generation's turn to keep the world from starving. Where do we start? Whilst intensive farming has kept the world fed, it's also largely ignored a very important partnership to all life on land. It's time to hop in the TARDIS, because we're going back in time. 600 million years ago, there were no plants on land, but there was lots of algae in the water, gobbling up, gobbling up. But there was algae in the water, gobbling up, I can't say gobbling. But there was lots of algae in the water, gobbling up, gobbling up, gobbling. 600 million years ago, there were no plants on land, but there was lots of algae in the water, gobbling up carbon dioxide and light. Algae couldn't make it onto land without the ability to store water or extract nutrients from its surroundings. Enter fungus that could do both of those things. Fungus was like, you sort out those sweet, sweet carbohydrates and I'll provide the water and the nutrients. And they shook, creating plants. The joy of this relationship is it was very open. One fungus could help many different plants and one tree could help many different fungus. The success of these partnerships has helped plants survive all of the catastrophes for the past 400 million years. It's why plants are still around, and dinosaurs are not. Plants stretched out into the world of air and light, and processed it into delicious sugars and lipids, whilst mycorrhizal fungus burrowed into the earth, extracting nutrients. The match was so perfect that there was a plant explosion. The globe turned green, Together, they removed 90% of atmospheric carbon dioxide, completely changing the climate and the course of evolution for pretty much all species. What I'm trying to get across is the fungus-plant partnership is a big deal. 400 million years later, a strange two-legged creature started something that may strain this relationship. Agriculture. Now, I'm not knocking agriculture. It's kept us fed for the past 10,000 years, but global yields have plateaued. Remember, the soil is alive. It's alive! At first, agricultural practices supported the fungal relationships of plants. We weren't constantly plowing the same area of land or pumping it full of chemical fertilizers. But now, we're running into trouble. Since this video started, around 100 football fields of fertile topsoil have been lost due to erosion. Fungi doesn't just feed plants, it binds soil together. In a 2019 study, organically farmed fields were found to contain 27 highly connected fungal species, whilst conventionally managed fields were found to contain zero. This is a problem. Fungus holds soil together and allows it to absorb water and nutrients. Over the past 30 years, 37 African countries have seen their soil depleted of 15 kilograms of potassium, 22 kilograms of nitrogen, and 2.5 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare. It appears the short-term success of chemical fertilizers and intensive farming has come at the cost of our soil's fungus. So what can be done to save our soils and sustain human existence? The 20th century approach was about intensive farming, frantically trying to feed a rapidly growing population. Could the 21st century approach be to cultivate fungus and microbes in the soil to keep it healthy? Crops with healthy partnerships with mycorrhizal fungus are better adapted to water shortages, are more resistant to disease and pests, and gain access to more nutrients. What tactics can farmers use to take advantage of this? Crop rotations. Some crops can actually have a detrimental effect on soil fungus, like rapeseed. So a farmer, after a rapeseed harvest, can plant something like legumes to help the soil fungus recover. Biofertilizers that contain bacteria. The plant stores them in their roots and they break down phosphorus and store nitrogen, whilst also fighting off pathogens. Reduction of plowing and tillage. So some fungus can survive being chopped up multiple times, but others actually suffer. So it's important to know what fungus is supporting a field's ecosystem. Reducing chemical fertilizers. First, they're expensive. And also, if the plant's getting its nutrients from fertilizer, it doesn't need the fungus. So it doesn't form a relationship with it, and the fungus suffers, and the topsoil suffers. 
planting different species of crop in the same field. So in a monoculture, there's one crop, so one species of pest can cause real damage. In a field with multiple crop species, there's more pest predators to control the pests, and also there's lots of different species for fungus to attach to, so it's a more biodiverse ecosystem in the soil. And that's just a few techniques that may help restore the ancient relationship between plants and fungus. The success of farming in the 21st century may depend on restoring rather than destroying this relationship. And that's it from me and this bowl of soil. Join me next time in my shed and I'll keep revealing the wonders of the world. It's hailing. Ah, oh, am I going to continue while it hails? Unbelievable. Why did I leave Indonesia? We're gonna have to we're gonna have to pause it while the hailstorm goes. Okay, we're back. Hopefully it's stopped hailing now. Goddamn England.